the rise of remote work and digital transformation, more and more organizations are adopting distributed branch deployments. But how do we protect these branches? With the rapid adoption of digital transformation technologies, including SaaS applications, digital voice, video tools, and IoT and BYOD endpoints, let's look at Fortinet Secure Branch Networking Solutions in this video. Hello everyone, my name is Bhavik Patel. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Fortinet. And in this video, we will understand and implement Fortinet SD branch solution that consolidates networking and security capabilities into a single solution that provides seamless protection of distributed environments. Using the Fortigate next generation firewall and broader Fortinet security fabric architecture, which includes 40 AP as well as 40 switch with 40 link to extend security throughout the network access layer. You will understand more as we go over basic setup. Step one, basic connectivity. In this setup, I am using a FortiGate 60F, but the process should be same for similar FortiGate branch models. As you can see, this model has dedicated WAN and FortiLink ports that should make the process much easier. FortiLink ports are the ones marked with the blue link icon labeled as A and B. Do note that small FortiGate branch models do not have dedicated management ports, but instead we can use any of these other number ports for out of the box management. So we can connect our management system to any of these ports. We can connect the uplink from my internet service provider ISP to one of these WAN ports, which is pre-configured to act as DHCP client. Similarly, the FortiLink ports on FortiGate can be connected to the highest ports on the Forti switch as a convention. Newer F-series switches have these higher ports already marked for FortiLink similar to FortiGate. Also, we can power on the FortiGate now. We can as well connect the LAN power over Ethernet PoE port on the APs to the starting ports on the switches. Since the PoE switch models, unlike the full PoE switch models, have only the lower half ports PoE capable, convention is to plug in power devices like APs, phones, cameras to be plugged into lower number ports. Thereafter, we can also power on the 40 switch that completes our connection. Step 2. Configuration Configuring out of the box 40 gate equipment is as easy as plugging in Ethernet cable into one of these ports and logging into web portal. Unlike required by most networking products, there is no need to use my console cable. Notice that when my management machine is plugged in, FortiGate automatically assigns me an IP address in the 192.168.1 subnet with default gateway as FortiGate at 192.168.1.99. We will get a certificate error initially because of the installed self-signed certificate, but you can always install your own trusted CA signed certificate to skip this alert. For now, we can just click advanced and proceed. The initial login required is username admin with no password. However, it then requires you to change password immediately, which I'll do so right away. Click OK, and then you can re-log in using the admin user and the new password. You might get a 40 gate setup wizard. If you would like to go through the setup in an easy wizard, or you can do all of these manually if you prefer it that way. Unless these are done, FortiGate will prompt you to go through the setup each time you log in until you complete it. You can select later if you plan on going through it later, but since it's prompting us now, we can do it now. I have already registered this device with my FortiGate account and it's running latest firmware, so I can this skip this step for now. Also, we have changed the password so we can skip this and click begin for remaining steps. We can specify the host name for this device as branch 40 gate 60F and click OK. For the dashboard setup, I will leave it for optimal, but you could choose comprehensive if you prefer to have all the monitoring options. Here, I can choose later just to show that I can skip the wizard anytime. It then provides us with an option to watch the 40 OS 7.2 new features video, but we can skip this for now. This gets us into 40 gate dashboard, which shows some of the basic system status information and summary that you can use to monitor the device. Here, 
we can add new widgets and arrange these widgets to suit your needs. This FortiGate is now up and running. And as you can see, there are already some pre-configured firewall policy that helps you get out of the box connectivity, which is why we can reach any internet sites and perform search. For this video, we are focusing on setting up branch connectivity needs, also sometimes referred to as SD branch setup. For this, we are going to first look at the network section into interface. Here in the faceplate section at the top, we can see the physical ports that are up. Hovering over them provides some additional connectivity statistics. Below, we can see the pre-configured interfaces WAN1, WAN2. This shows my WAN DHCP link provided IP address, DNS settings, and enable disable administrative access through this interface. So here we are allowing ping, but you may disable these options as security best practices and one that suits your needs. Heading back, we can look at the FortiLink interface, which will act as the link aggregation interface to connect FortiGate to Forti switches. Notice that our interfaces A and B are already part of this interface. If not, you can edit this interface and more members to it. But if you do not see the desired port, you might need to remove those interfaces first before they are assigned for other purpose. Further, there is an option to automatically authorize device if you would like to automatically authorize devices, say during initial branch setup and turn it off once the setup is done. For now, we are going to do that manually and not rely on this feature. Notice that FortiLink split interface is turned on by default. This allows us to create active passive link between two switches of a multi-chassis lag, MC lag. There are several topologies which are supported using FortiLink and FortiLink split interface, but that is beyond the scope of this video. For now, we can leave it on default and head back. Next, since we have already connected switch and AP, we should see the notification to authorize new devices and redirect you to a relevant page. There are several places that you can authorize the devices. Example, in Wi-Fi and switch controller section, manage switches to authorize switches, managed 40 APs to authorize APs. Other places include in the system section, fabric management, or inside the security fabric section, physical topology. This provides us an opportunity to go over the physical topology page. FortiGate automatically maps downstream devices together to provide a nice physical representation of device connectivity. Since FortiGate is trying to build this by itself, it might take a few moments for this page to populate. Here, we can right click devices to authorize them or perform other actions available in the drop down menu. This will add the devices to switch an AP controller in FortiGate. After they finish rebooting and join the FortiGate fabric, during this time, the devices might turn red until they join the fabric. We can from there head into the second component after FortiGate, which is FortiSwitch, required for SD branch connectivity. Inside the Wi Fi and Switch controller section, Manage FortiSwitch page represents FortiSwitch associated to this FortiGate. Default list view lists all the connected FortiSwitch with their status model, firmware version, and other such details. Additional fields can be populated on this page, clicking on the gear icon available on the top left corner when hovering over the table title. Clicking on drop down button over the table, we can head over to switch topology view to look at how all 40 switches are connected. Notice the FortiLink interface on FortiGate is connected to FortiLink ports on the Forti switch and additional details when you hover over any of these. Notice we can as well right click on any of these and perform additional monitoring, diagnostics and troubleshooting tasks all from one place for the Forti switch. Heading into Forti switch ports page, we can configure native VLAN for my access and trunk ports as well as allowed VLAN for any additional tagged VLANs that you might want to send over the trunk by clicking on pencil icon on right corner of these cells. Alternatively, more than one ports can be selected by selecting or deselecting multiple ports at once, clicking on control command key or series of ports by selecting shift key. Notice that by default, all ports are assigned 
with default.40 link VLAN, details of which can be seen on FortiSwitch VLANs page. Right click and selecting edit option reveals native VLAN ID 1 but no DHCP and assigned IP. For our APs to receive an IP, we shall assign an IP to this VLAN interface. Enabling DHCP and checking security fabric connection for security fabric to communicate over this interface. Alternatively, we can also create a new VLAN with the interface IP, DHCP and security fabric connection to assign it as native VLAN to a FortiSwitch switch port instead of using default as a more secure method. But here we are leveraging the default assignment to all ports to save the work on having to manually assign this new VLAN to native VLAN ports where all APs connect. Heading back to FortiSwitch switch ports page, we should be able to see the green port status representing PoE status enabled delivering power. We can from same page right click and reset PoE to power cycle AP if needed. Heading into security fabric physical topology page should represent all switches blue once the fabric connectivity is established. Notice that now we can see an alert to authorize two new APs. Clicking on this leads us to fabric management page where we can authorize the APs connected to 40 switches. We can do the same from managed 40 APs page as well. After authorization, these APs should power cycle and join the 40 gate acting as a controller. The default profiles assigned to them are based on the AP model. These profiles are automatically created on the 40 gate in the background, but you can also manually create new profiles if you have a need for it. Heading into security fabric, physical topology page should represent all devices as blue once the fabric connectivity is established. If the topology is not updated, you can always click update now to create the most recent topology. We can optionally assign names and description to these devices to better identify them at any point in time. Lastly, we can check the current and latest firmware available for these devices. We can update all these devices from one common fabric management page to download the firmware from FortiGuard without requiring to download and manually update each device. Once all devices are updated and back up, we can head back to the physical topology page to verify the state of all devices. Now that we have our 40 gate, 40 switch and 40 AP staged, we can look to set up Wi-Fi network. To do so, we head back into Wi-Fi and switch controller section and selecting SSID. There, we select the option to create new SSID, provide a name and selecting traffic mode. Note that the name field here is the wireless interface name on the 40 gate. We'll fill in the SSID name later below on this page. Tunnel being most secure, to tunnel traffic back to the 40 gate acting as 4FI controller, we are going to select this. But we do have an option to select bridge or mesh to drop traffic locally from AP into network or to create a wireless mesh network. We can then fill in details for network IP and subnet mask for clients connecting to this wireless network. We can skip having administrative access using the wireless network as a security best practice, but you can turn on some of these options if needed. Lastly, we do need a DHCP server for clients to be able to connect and get an IP address. We can then fill in Wi-Fi settings including broadcast name as SSID, security settings and so on. For now, we are selecting WPA2 personal for authentication but you can also use newer WPA3 or enterprise as recommended practice. We can then fill in passphrase to use to connect to this SSID and hit OK. That should automatically place the tunnel SSID in the default group to broadcast over the APs in default 40 AP profile. As you can see from 40 AP profiles page, these AP profiles are configured to broadcast tunnel mode SSIDs by default, but you can edit to broadcast bridge SSID if that's your need. 40 gate being a firewall, by default the traffic is dropped for security. So we also need to provide a firewall policy to allow traffic. To do this, Head to policy and object section and select firewall policy page. For this, 
we could just copy the default policy but for example we are creating a new similar policy for wireless select incoming interface as wireless interface we created outgoing interface as wan for internet access source as the address object for wireless and for all destination and service for a quite open internet access policy make sure that nad is selected for wan traffic you can restrict access of this new policy as required or expected by your organization standards and assign security profiles to enforce on flowing traffic but for now we are not enabling any of these last step is to verify connectivity we unplug the ethernet connection and connect using the broadcasting ssid using the password we defined earlier by turning the wifi on we should be able to search the configured ssid attempting to connect to this wifi network by entering the password we defined earlier we should thereby associate authenticate and connect to this ssid getting the dhcp in the network we defined thereby we should be able to browse the internet since we have a policy defined as such for wireless users in summary this video should help you demonstrate the ability for single pane of management for a sd branch connectivity solution to manage 40 switch and 40 aps using 40 gate as a unified controller this solution provides the ease of use reducing repetitive configuration while providing a secure connectivity for all your branch needs hope it was informative for you thanks for watching